previously in Finero. Is there anybody, and you're here, you feel like you're, you're not in fellowship with, the, with God. You don't have any fellowship with God. Put up your hand. Okay, come here. Stand here. Anybody with pain, I have a headache, I have a stomachache. Anybody? Come also. Now, what, what's paining you? How long has it been? I really don't remember, but it has been there for a long time since I was still in primary. Okay, you who is not in constant fellowship, I want you to put your hand on that back. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I believe. I believe. Tonight. Tonight. Regardless of how I feel. Regardless of how I feel. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I command this bag. I command this bag. That has been paining this woman. That has been paining this woman. For all these years. For all these years. To heal now. To heal now. Now give us space. I want you to check your back. Do something you could not do. Are you feeling any pain? I'm not feeling it. Constant fellowship with God is faith in what he has done and the place that he has placed you, regardless of how you're feeling or the state of your spirit at that particular point. So the Bible says that's why we might live, that we might live and behave in the newness of life, that your attitude will be of a newness of life that you think like one who has newness of life. The Bible says, for by death he died. Who is that? Jesus. And he died to sin, ending his relation to it. And the life that he lives, he's living to God in unbroken fellowship with him. Jesus lives in an unbroken fellowship with the Father. Fellowship with God now in the newness of life has nothing to do with what you do or what you don't do. It has everything to do with where Jesus is. Some people don't understand how the newness of life works. Let me show you something in Mark chapter 10. He says, for even the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give life and ransom for many. So when you say, I'm a servant of God, you are a yielded entity, individual, vessel, child, and to God working in your life. When people are born again, the first thing we're supposed to teach them is to be delivered from what they, they are to do for God versus what God wants to do in them. Dead works is not wrong works. No, they are just works you do for God instead of allowing Him to do in you. Jesus is not dealing with you because of what you're doing for Him. Jesus is dealing with you because of what you allow Him to do for you. For it is God which works in you both to will and to do according to His good pleasure. That is the testimony of living in the newness of life. You remember when Abraham was being spoken about? The Bible says he stuck at not at the promise. He did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb, nor his age. But the Bible says, but he was what? Strong, giving glory unto God. That is the newness of life. You understand that you did not come to serve Jesus. Jesus came to serve you. That when you are serving God's saints, it is still Jesus giving you the grace to serve. It is Jesus in you serving. Paul said, I labored more than all my brethren, yet not I, but the grace of God that labored in me. Many people count the things they've done for God. Some of us are counting the things Jesus has done for us. Revelation, the spirit, responds to men of faith. Men of faith don't respond to it. How much you know in God is equal to how much you believe you know. That's the beginning of Revelation responding to you. When the Bible says you have an unction from on high, you know all things. Do you believe that you know or you don't? If you believe that you know, that's the beginning of the newness of life. Revelation will yield to you and overflow. Why? Because it began from the place of I have it. Whatever you believe that you have inside, always comes out. That is why the Bible says it's not what comes out. Entering a man defiles him. But the Bible says it's what is inside a man coming out of him defiling him. The reason why some of you have failed to overcome the flesh is because inside you think you're dirty, even outside you're dirty. The only way filthiness can come to your spirit is if you behold deception. When you start to understand what it means to draw things from within you and then allowing them to come out of you, many of you will understand that that is the epitome of the newness of life. The newness of life begins with you understanding that everything that I need is inside me. When God needs to give a man helper suitable, he cannot look for her outside. He has to look for her inside. When he has to give a man a child, Seth, Cain, Abel, he doesn't get from out. He gets from within. Everything you need in this world is inside you. You're complete. 
The Bible says, and ye are complete in him, whether you're Baptist or Pentecostal, Methodist, whatever you are. He says, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality. Let's define something about holiness here. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. For it is he who delivered and saved us and called us, what? With a holy calling in itself holy. In other words, the calling you have on you is holy. You carry holiness in your spirit because you were called with a holy calling. And that holy calling you receive leads to holiness. Me, I don't have a choice. Even if I say, let me walk, I just find myself walking in holiness. You understand? Even if I look at it, I just... Why? Because the calling by which I've been called in itself is holy. And the Bible says, and he did not do it because of any merit that we have done. There's nothing you did to be holy. You're holy because he called you the holy calling. And because there was a purpose that he carried afore and the grace that he was to bestow upon you. He says, you know what? The only way she will walk holy is to call her with the holy calling so that the holy calling on her life causes her to walk holy. So that she's not the one who wakes up to be holy, but she just wakes up and she's walking in holiness. That is why in Romans, he calls your fruit unto holiness. He says, being now made free from sin, you have become servants to God and you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Why? Because you don't try to be holy. Uh-uh. You are holy because he called you the holy calling. You don't try to be righteous. That's why I told people, some people take righteousness as a work. No, righteousness is not a work. Righteousness is a gift. Righteousness is a gift you're supposed to enjoy. That is, that gift is what works in you. But it's not you working for it. It's it working in you. That is why the Bible says that the righteous shall feed many. When you understand this gift, when you receive, he says, how much more? They that receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign. The Amplified says, as kings in this life. Listen to the prophecy of man filled by the Holy Ghost. Luke chapter 1, he says, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He came and set his people free. And the next verse says, He set the power of salvation in the center of our lives and in the very house of David, his servant. And the Bible says, Just as he promised long ago through the preaching of his holy prophets. And the next verse says, Deliverance from our enemies and every hateful hand. The moment a man hates you, you're free from him. That means if he had anything to do to you, the moment he hates you, he can never harm you. You're free. Let me tell you something. If you ever hate an anointed man or become jealous or envious, if you're his level, he will surpass you because he's free from you. If you're below him, ah, you'll never catch him. It's like one time I was reading the scripture. Some of you, some people walk out of your lives. Oh, he walked out of my life. How could she? Oh, she left me. The Bible says they walk out for others to walk in. <laughs> That's why you have to be bold. Eh? I'm, I'm walking out of your life. I'm tired of you, Joan. You tell him, brother, and when you're leaving, don't stand on the door because you're holding back the traffic. Oleta jamu murugudo. Bobo genda genda. No uru jitoru yimiramu. 